Rightio. Let's get these tracks happening. Um, so we've got our base colours, we've got the dry brushes of the silver. Now I've got three different pigment powders. Now I'm just using the Flames of War ones, which are by MIG. Uh, I've got Standard Rust, I'm using uh, Track Brown, um, it's quite a dark colour. Um, and I'm using Europe Dust. Uh, I've got Black Smoke and Gun Metal from that particular company. But I'm also using, um, uh, uh, this is by Back to Basics, and this is just aging powder. This is Bile Yellow. Uh, that's quite a sparingly, uh, sparing colour. I don't want a real lot of that. But let's, uh, let's get into it. So first things first, what I do is I mix up a little bit of, um, uh, what is it, uh, PVA glue or white glue and water until it's just like, um, I don't know, consistency of, consistency of paint that you want to be able to put through an airbrush. Well, not airbrushing, but just that consistent sort of like, I guess, milk like everyone says. Um, so... Uh, it's it's still quite uh, runny and uh, it's um, not thick and claggy like it comes out of the bottle. So basically, we get a bit of um, of the water and PV on our PVA glue onto our brush, and we're um, we're going to paint that particular mixture into the the recesses of the tracks not the little raised parts and same down here we just want it in the recess you do not go overboard with this um, this is just to help grab a more larger amount of the pigment powder um, we don't want it to stand out um, like dog's balls, we just want it to be, we want it there, but we want it subtle as well, but we want it there, and we want it noticeable as a build-up. Now, the smaller the model, the more care, obviously, you've got to, you've got to take. Um, so now that's done. Uh, I know where I want my uh, pigment powder. I'm going to start off with Europe Dust, and it's kind of a, um, a pale, um, sort of a bile-coloured, um, pigment powder and I just want to steeple it into the into the uh, into the recesses where that glue and that is just like so Basically, all this is achieving with that glue is to pick up a larger amount of the pigment powder than as if it was just dusted on with a paintbrush because we want that to show that there's a build-up of grime and dirt and crap and stuff in between the tracks. So, uh, I'm using the European dust as the more dominant colour. Um, So I want to start with that. So if you want to use, if you say you're simulating your tank being in the eastern front, you probably want to use like the uh, the track brown, the darker um, stuff, and use that as the dominant colour. Um, so something like that. Now I just want to take, I want to wash my brush off. I want to try and dry it pretty good because otherwise the pigment powder is going to clag up and um, basically you're just going to end up making a paste and painting it on and I don't want I want a more of a steeple effect so I'm going to grab my track brown um, and with the track brown which is the uh, the darker one I'm going to sparingly put it into uh, just some spots not all over just in selected spots um, and those selected spots be 
be, I guess, generous to the point that you're putting some colour down, but don't go, as I said, don't go stupid and plaster the track in it, because we don't want this to be the dominant colour. This will all blend in later. Um, now, while I've still got the track brown on the brush, just dip into your rust, your standard rust by MIG, and we just want to be more sparingly again with it. More selective than if we were doing the track brown. Um, like that. Now, I want a little bit of bile yellow, which is that yellowy one, and that's just going to give me just a, a help blend um, some of those other colours together, not so harsh, like between the Europe dust and the, and the uh, track brown is quite a harsh difference, and that yellow is just going to help bridge that a little bit there. So that's that. Now what I want to do is I want to take my Europe dust again. I'm going to make sure the brush is dry. Now we start to dust this on. The Europe dust. Getting it in and around the around the, uh, the, the wheels. We don't want it as a solid block, we want it dusted. That's the effect we're after, we want that dusted. I'm not after mud and crap um, all over the tank. I don't want that at all, I just want it more of a dusted. Now, this track, we start to just blend with a swirly motion and you'll get a feel you just start adding you'll know what you're after and you'll start adding the uh, more European dust if needed and stuff like that if you think you need a more of a darker tone then you'll end up you just get a feel for these things Depending on the look that you guys are after, um, will be what colours you add and stuff like that. So, so once that's done, um, that's all on there pretty good. Uh, I want to take my big brush because my big brush is. Um, got a bit more of a stiffle, stiffer bristle and I'm going to quite quite uh, sort of flick it now I've already done this track here uh, I did that before the damn camera stuffed up um, so basically um, and, and then it's just basically from there you'll, you'll know you'll just add and um, change as you go I want I want that to be quite a dusty look up here The more dusty you want it, the, the more you add. Now I'm starting to get the effect I want. I know this side I want more. That's probably just about it. 
Um, I'll just flick a bit onto the front of the tank. And I'll probably just flick a bit onto the back of the tank. This, um, you just want to sort of just sparingly on the very bottom. Um, where you'd think that the, uh, the, the, the dust and stuff would flick up. Um, have a look at some reference photos and that's probably all I want to add there. Um, I'm going to have to probably make this a separate video because I really want to show you as much as this as I can. Um, now, now I uh, get my finger and I Here that might do it. Ah, here we go. So I've got a brush. I just put a little bit of water on this brush. Now I want to just put a little bit, not too much, because we don't want to we, we don't want to remove the powder off on the inside. But what I want to do is I want to just wet that raised area uh, that we painted in the silvers. And then we just rub it, rub it off with our finger, the powder, and expose the metal underneath like that to show you the track lengths. Um, we do that all where we've done all the, um, where we've done all the pigment powder and the metal where we've done all the uh, the oily steel metal sorry the reason we don't just paint it because we want to show the it gives it like a more of a natural sort of a blend to the metal and different angles will give you a different sheen and make it look a bit more natural than just straight out painted um, if you, I always find just just wet your finger and just expose it like that along. That's it. Um, that that's how I do my tracks. Uh, I know everyone's different with tracks. It's quite a personal uh, thing. Um, you know the look that you're after. You might be after a muddy look, a dusty look. You might be after a snow might be after extremely rusted and worn look you might be after a charred look if, to simulate the tank tanks been um, destroyed and there's been extreme temperatures and cooked the tracks whatever for a diorama whatever it may be uh, it's pretty much you can use this technique um, for any of those looks it's just basically what colours you use and how you apply them in what order. And that's that's pretty much it. Um, I guess while we're still, what are we up to? About 13 minutes. Let's try and make this a 15 minute video. Uh, I'll, with that mixture of the water and the PVA glue, I'm going to do a bit of steepling like that on the muffler oh, in there. just like so and I'm going to use um, some standard rust I'm just going to dip me brush into it like so and then where that is uh, where I've steepled the that in frame. Yep. Um, I'm just gonna tap, not like that. Tap the brush and blow the excess off. And you're thinking, oh, why don't you just sort of steeple it on? Well, I don't want that rust 
colour all over the tank. I want it to be like a I'll just steeple a bit there. Let's do what I said don't do. Um, just like that. I want it to be textured along with that paint. Now, take the glue again and put some other dots on it. Take the yellow. And that's it. Um, when that dries and we throw down a varnish onto it, that'll dull up and give that nice textured um, uh, textured rust effect. Uh, if you get rust on the tank, get it off. Um, you don't want to seal in a dot of rust pigment powder somewhere. Uh, and black carbon for the barrel. Uh, where have I got my black carbon? If I can find it, here it is. Uh, black smoke for the barrel. Um, so, same thing um, as anything else. Uh, and same thing as the, uh, the tracks. We just want to dust it. I said I wouldn't, but I might yet. Um, end up putting a hole in this uh, thing here. This. This. You know, you'll get a feel for how far up you want to come. I just sort of do the tip. Good thing with powder, it'll give you a natural blend back into the barrel, like back back into the barrel. So um, something like that. Um, and I want to just get a bit of pigment powder into this muffler here. Um, and basically. around the muffler on the end there like like so and where the smoke would blow which is here we just want to put a just a bit of soot there like that um, and one last thing uh, for the pigment powders is I want to take gun metal and I just want to uh, just hit the edges not the whole tank just some of the uh, areas you want to simulate a little bit of bare metal. Now this is really, really, really subtle, but um, I really like it because when you stand back on the table, you sort of, you're playing away and you go, oh, there's a little bit of a, a gleam there of bare metal. Like it's, it's, it's extremely subtle, but when you get that effect, when it hits your eye, it's quite effective. It's the same, I guess, um, using this pigment powder would be the same as uh, if, I don't know, if you, if you used a graphite pencil or something. I know a lot of guys use graphite pencil. It's pretty much the same. Same thing.
Uh, I want to get a little bit on the, like a, a good dusting in here. Just to give that a bit of a metally sheen in there. As you can see, it's quite subtle, but it's quite effective too. Uh, I want to give the MG a dusting. Good dusting on the MG. And you know, it gives that nice, nice sheen of a gun barrel there. Gives you the natural highlights and helps with the shadows. Um, it's pretty much it for the tank, I think, guys. Now, really, um, now all that's done is to give it a uh, clear coat, protect it, and I guess next week, um, when I take it back up, we'll jump onto the figures. That that literally is the tank done. Um, uh, let's have a look here. There's one Hetzer from Bolt Action. Alright guys, thank you very much for tuning in to how to uh, paint uh, Hetzer from Bolt Action. Uh, I am going to do the figures. I wasn't going to do the figures and I thought, no, nah, it's a great... Because I really wanted to show you how to paint a Bolt Action figure. So I thought we might get in and we'll paint some of these uh, figures here on the tank. Not only it finishes the tank, you'll get a sense on how to paint these figures here. But then also I'll be doing a how to paint... Americans by Bolt Action and how to paint German, uh, here German Grenadiers um, by Bolt Action as well. Um, as I said, thank you so much for tuning into this. Um, from me doing this uh, little series, I've gained enormous amount of subscribers in the last two weeks. Uh, you know who you are. Thank you very much. Um, it's very inspirational to look at your, your subscriber number and it's jumped like 40 to 50 in the space of two weeks is and for someone like me that just throws out these really low budget <laughs> shitty producted how to's and this is just how I do it and I'm more than happy to share any any tip that I have with you guys um, it sort of blows me away that so many of you would tune in to, uh, to hear me uh, talk about it um, so on that note guys um, Cheers, hey, and see you on the next one.